And when I look out, I can see a box around where I should be looking, right? And I look back at my, my radar, and yes, I still have the object locked, and it's right in front of me. And I look over at the FLIR, and yes, I can still see the energy coming out of that piece of the sky, you know, very precisely. Right. And um, and then my sensors are telling me where to look, and we fly right by it within a few feet, and uh, or, you know, a few hundred feet, and um, just can't see anything. And you don't see anything. No. Yeah. But then it's still in the FLIR. Still what on the is radar. going through your mind when you see it on every single one of your instruments, but you can't see it with your bare eyes, your yeah. naked eye? I, you know, I don't know. We didn't we didn't make anything of it in a sense. I mean, you think I, it was like a something's fishy with the radar, something's wonky with the mechanical no, instruments. At this point, it's it's inconceivable to us that our radar and FLIR and visuals would potentially be now not for everyone, right? Not not everyone, but for the cases that we did see objects to be able to fool all three of those is interesting. Now, what you can do is you can say, okay, well, perhaps some were physical and some were not, right? That's one way you could go down this. And bottom line is we just don't have the data for that, right? To, to say whether every object represented a physical object or there were only some physical objects and the others were, were not physical. We just don't have enough data to kind of make that assumption. But when you're flying around out there, you have to make the assumption that they're all physical. In 2015, we started to prepare for our workups. Uh, or actually, maybe it was... 2014, but it was right at the change of the year. Um, but we left essentially on on an aircraft carrier um, to essentially get ready for war. It's called a workup cycle. We spend months on the boat, and we basically do all that training from the boat just to practice like we play. And while we were uh, off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida, that's when we uh, filmed the gimbal video uh, that people are familiar with. There but yeah, so this, so this is the gimbal video, right? Mm-hmm. So okay. this is the object we were seeing next to the five other objects. Okay, yeah, yeah, go ahead and roll it. Dude, there's a fucking drone on, bro. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The whole thing, dude. So these are friends of yours. <laughs> it was so weird when I was... I'll tell you a sec. That's not an LNS though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like Look at that thing. It's rotating. Yeah, one of them was in my wedding party. Really? <laughs> that gimbal video that we just watched was only 35 seconds long. Mm -hmm. It was much longer than that, though, right? Uh, I don't know if I want to say much longer, but it was. There was definitely more there. I, yeah. Why? Why do they only? Why do we only get 30 seconds? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any any um, speculation why? Um, I mean, there you mentioned that there was like the the wedge shaped formation. Was that a part of this video? I never saw the, those on the FLIR, but what I did see them on was the uh, the SA page. Okay. Um, and that was primarily what I was looking on. And when I did look at the FLIR, uh, basically saw the same image that you saw, um, plus maybe a little bit more near the end. Um as the flight mechanics seemed to get rockier. So it kind of, it kept kind of doing that, mm. that motion that you see that it kind of seemed unstable in a sense, but I, I don't want to put words onto it until it comes out. Cause it has been like six years for me now <laughs> since I've seen that video and it hasn't, you know, which one is this? Just the more of the gimbal essentially. The, the full saying. version yeah. of it. Yeah. So yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe Christopher Mellon was the one who sort of leaked these videos and is the reason they even came out in the first place back in what was the year that first came out in the New York times? It was 2017, 2017. That's when it was. Yeah. And, you know, he talked about in James Fox's documentary, The Phenomenon, how there's much more. There's These videos are much longer, yeah. and they're yet to release the full videos for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Do you have any speculation of why they wouldn't release the full videos? Well, I, th I think it depends on your definition. So um, full video um, – the full video has radar data, right? So the FLIR and the radar and the situational awareness page are recorded at the same time. Not necessarily those two pages, but the screens that they're displayed on. And so if you have one, you have the other. And mm. so what that means is the situational awareness page with all the radar data, you know, it did exist. I don't know if it still does exist, but, okay. you know, that's where you'd want – that's what you'd want to see because it has all the radar, the kinematics, and it's going to show it over the entire course of when they were detectable, whether they were directly looking at it or not. And so there is much more data to be had even outside of just the video. Mm. 
What does your buddy think? The guy, the guy who actually filmed this, the guy who was in your wedding party. Would you, do you guys talk about this often or? Uh, not so, not, not really. I mean, he's, he's still in, he's deployed a lot. Is he? Very busy. So he's just heads down. Um, but no, not really. I'm, I'm eager to engage with him when the time's right. You know, I know yeah. this isn't the time to be distracting him with stuff like this. And I'm sure he's already has enough of it from the people inside. It's no secret, you know, like who he is within the military, just based off of the uniqueness of his response to the video. <laughs> is that, you think the reason that he hasn't gone public about it is because he's still in there and he just doesn't want to, he doesn't want the attention or? What, it's not even attention. What, what he legally, getting, he's not allowed to Legally, speak he's yeah. not allowed to. Mm -hmm. Do you see any other military people just kind of talking? You? Yeah. Dude, I was almost arrested for that. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been told. So when I did that, I was, you know, I, I communicated to the best extent I could that I was just communicating as a private citizen about experiences I had. Um, the night before I left to go to D.C., I got a call at like 10 p.m. saying that I now had orders to be there and I need to be there in my, my uniform, my whites, essentially. And I need to go to the Pentagon before I went to Congress and the Senate. <laughs> um which was not a great revelation. But um, so I was scrambling, right? Like I, I was months away from getting out. My uniforms packed up and like shipped across the country at this point. It was like my dress white, you know, I wasn't expecting to wear in case there was, someone died or something really. Right. Um, so I'm like going around my buddy's houses at like midnight, borrowing their uniforms and their their stuff so I could, you know, show up because my flight was at like six in the morning the next day, you know, like. Oh my gosh. Um, so it was a bit of a scramble. Um I ended up going to the Pentagon, mm -hmm. uh, into the bowels, um, with some naval intelligence folks, um, some who we might be, um, more familiar with nowadays since the public hearings. Um, who? I, oh. I, I'm so bad with names. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but, um, but we had a conversation about, you know, my, our experiences. Uh, it was nothing nefarious necessarily. It was more of, I think, wanting to hear from the horse's mouth before him. Uh, I got quite the entourage from there over to uh, to the Senate. Um, there were representatives from the, you know, numerous admirals from the Navy and the Pentagon that accompanied me uh, to the to that meeting, which included representatives from the executive branch, Pentagon, Senate, and elsewhere. Um, and essentially, me at a table like this with you know Pentagon folks on one side and um, senators and whatnot and their staffers over here and. Me at the head of the table. How old are you at this point? Um, God, that's a good question. How old am I now? <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, I was probably 27, 28. Wow. Yeah, maybe a little bit older. And what, what, what was that like? What was the conversation like? Um, what did they seem? What did they seem interested in? Like what? What, what did you sense? The it priority was, of what was there with them. <clears throat> They seemed to just want to objective. understand what they were seeing. So from the Pentagon side, it seemed like they, this, you know, they had some understanding that there was a problem in this regard, but um, it was classified. Um, we weren't really able to have too much of open conversation about it in that environment. Mm -hmm. um, I would say things. Senators would ask me questions, and they asked the DOD folks, "What do you have to, you know, do you have any comment on that?" And the answer was either yes, no, or we'll talk about it. In a, you know, under a higher classification, essentially. Mm. And so they were, they didn't have a lot to add to that conversation on the, on the Pentagon side, but it was clear that the, um, the folks on the Senate side were, were, were intrigued and were interested and, um, were, they would seem to be asking the right questions. Of course, at the time I didn't know where it was going to go. Um, I, I, you know, said my piece and then just headed back essentially. Um, it was maybe, you know, an hour Maybe conversation, I think. What was, what were you afraid was going to, were you afraid that oh, yeah. something was going to happen? They were going to, you're going to get fired or something? Uh, yeah, that or Leavenworth, I suppose. But uh, you can't really get fired from the military per se. I mean, you can a little bit, but um, I don't think that was the the, the fear. But um, anyways, I, I they, was. What do they say? Like, like. <clears throat> so I was kind of, I was like ignorant of all this kind of drama going on in the background. Right. Um, after. Later that night, I got a call from someone who was in the um, in the in the meeting that we had on the hill. Okay, inquiring whether the um, the Pentagon had intimidated me or whether they had asked, you know, tried to influence my story or anything of that nature. So there seemed to be, you know, somewhat of a distrust between those two.